This is a powerful strand build for Onslaught, which centers on Tusk of the Boar, Foe Tracer, and Whirling Maelstrom. Onslaught is all about ad control. Tusk clears adds easily, and also generates tangles frequently, which is bonus free ad clear with Whirling Maelstrom. All the while you are spreading debuffs like Sever and Unraveling. Tusk and Tangles clear lower tier enemies, and Foe Tracer helps you to melt majors and bosses. Tusk of the Boar is a strand waveframe grenade launcher, also known as Green Forbearance. It's available from Iron Banner. Waveframes are so good in Onslaught, especially since a lot of ad spawns include a group of lower tier enemies. Kill them with the wave and proc chain reaction for high damage to yellow bars and to create tangles. Tangles are created by killing enemies highlighted by Foe Tracer or debuffed by Strand, for example, Unrivaling Rounds or Slice. Slice is great on Tusk for spreading Sever, since severed enemies deal reduced damage and unravel into a tangle. Another key piece of this build is the Exotic Helmet Foe Tracer. The description on Dim reads, Dealing ability damage to a major boss or player target grants 4 stacks of subclass matching weapon surge, and highlights the target for 10 seconds each. So basically, ability damage on a major or boss gives you a matching elemental surge for 10 seconds. So you hit enemies with Shackle Grenade, your melee, Threaded Spectre, or Threadlings, then hit them with Tusk of the Boar or Strand Heavy for big damage. Unfortunately, the Whirling Maelstroms don't seem to proc Foe Tracer. Let's talk about the subclass setup. First off, the Super is not the best for Onslaught, but it's still pretty useful. I like to use it when the ADU is being rushed by adds, especially waves with a lot of majors and bosses. When you're in your super, you always have grapple as your grenade, so it's useful for quick map traversal, but it's something to be aware of if you're relying on shackle grenades a lot. Also, you're a little squishy when you're in the super, so be careful. I ran up face to face to a couple bosses and ended up fine, but I wouldn't make it a habit. For our abilities, we're running Gambler's Dodge for more melees to proc Foe Tracer. The melee is nice since it auto tracks through multiple targets, severing them, which is useful for making tangles. And then we have Shackle Grenade to slow down adds rushing to ADU, or if you get surrounded. It's a great crowd control tool. Moving on to the aspects, the important one here is Whirling Maelstrom, allowing tangles to clear adds for you. It's kind of like mobile with their horde. The other slot is open to interpretation. I use Threaded Spectre to act as a decoy, but double grenades would also be strong, and slam might be okay too if you're standing in ad spawns a lot. For Fragments, we have Thread of Warding for high woven mail uptime, since orb generation is a key part of any successful onslaught run. Thread of Transmutation to then create tangles just for having woven mail up. Thread of Generation for free grenade recharge, since you will be doing a ton of damage. And Thread of Continuity to extend the duration of strand debuffs. Alternative options include Thread of Binding if you'd like using the super. Thread of Rebirth to spawn threadlings in addition to everything else when you use Tusk and Thread of Fury might be strong depending on if Whirling Maelstrom grants a lot of energy. I would only swap out Thread of Generation for one of these, the other three are pretty integral to the gameplay loop. As for the rest of the weapons, I was using La Monarch and a Strand Machine Gun in the background gameplay. It was okay. I would recommend Buried Bloodline and a heavy GL or Rocket. Buried Bloodline for Devour and because it's OP, and then a GL or Rocket for melting majors and bosses faster. Another option is an energy slot solar weapon to take advantage of artifact mods such as Flint Striker. Honestly, it didn't feel like my energy and heavy weapons mattered too much. Tusk just does so much work. Now let's go over armor mods. On the helmet, we have Strand Siphon for tons of orbs and heavy ammo finder. On gauntlets, firepower for a free orb when using the melee to make a tangle, and impact induction to give the melee a little extra value. We're running the mod combo of Charged Up, Stacks on Stacks, and Special Finisher for infinite special ammo, and then a resist mod matching the elemental threat. If you're not interested in special ammo, you could just run three resist mods. On the legs we've got Recuperation for healing, since there's not much other healing available for Strand Hunter unless you're running Buried Bloodline, and then Innervation for further grenade recharge. And finally on the class item, Powerful Attraction to vacuum up orbs easily, and Reaper for orb gen. Artifact mods help push this build to even further heights. We run Unraveling Orbs to get Unraveling Rounds on Tusk, and Horde Shuttle for free Threadlings, because why not? For boss phases, I would swap to Lucky Pants with the same subclass setup. It worked okay. It might not be necessary, but it's nice to have infinite ammo for boss DPS, just in case. Bow Tracer is pretty good for boss damage itself, just rotate through abilities one at a time to keep the buff going longer. For the Fallen War Priest boss specifically, it's very aggressive, so be ready to juke. Also, precision damage is not going to go great. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much. If you're new to the channel, I mostly focus on PvP, but I enjoy endgame PvE and plan to make more videos like this one if it does well. 
and if you've been here for a while, I appreciate you. I know this is outside my usual PvP content, but I've been really enjoying Onslaught, so I wanted to share what I've been doing. If you're interested in seeing live gameplay, I stream on Twitch every Tuesday and Friday. Come hang out sometime. Once more unto the 